morning, everyone. Christ is risen. He is risen Hallelujah. Amen. How many of you came today and said, there's somebody seat, sitting in my seat? <laughs> I'm not going to have you raise your hand. So glad you could come out to this combined service today, and a special welcome to those of you who may be new, and those of you who are uh, uh, part of our new member orientation that we're going to have directly after the service today. That is exactly what's going to happen. If you are new or you're interested in knowing more about uh, American Lutheran Church or becoming a member, we invite you to come over to the fellowship hall, which is straight down that hallway that way, and uh, join Join us for some lunch today. Uh, we're going to have a great time. The ministry leaders are going to be here uh, today to talk or just to sh showcase some of the ministries that you can be involved in and uh, learn a little bit more. We're going to have a great time then. And then this Thursday night at 530 we are going to have a, a special meeting called What We Believe. And this is really for anybody who would like to have either a refresher course on uh, the basics of the Christian faith and those who are new who would just like to know a little bit more about where our, our faith life is. And so we encourage you to come out this Thursday night at, uh, at 5.30 right here. It's going to be also over in the fellowship hall. Forgot to mention, uh, if you are brand new, we'd love to have you fill out one of these welcome cards. And uh, you could uh, give that to an usher sometime during the service today. It really helps us get to know you and how we can serve you better. We greatly appreciate that. A couple other things I wanted to mention. This Friday, uh, the first Friday potluck is back on track again. So they're going to be meeting this Friday at 5.30, and it's really open to anybody. Fellowship time, bring something to share. A great time of just enjoying each other right here. It's going to be down in the activity center downstairs right here at church. And then coming up in just a few weeks, we have a really exciting time planned for the 75th anniversary of American Lutheran Church. Can you believe this church has been in this community for 75 years? Wow. How many of you are... How many of you are here when the doors opened? A couple. All right. There we go. So we're going to have a, a, an action-packed weekend that, uh, that weekend. It's going to be the weekend of May 19th to the 21st. May 19th is a special uh, concert uh, by a gentleman named um, uh, Mitch McVicker. I keep wanting to call him MacGyver, but he's not MacGyver. <laughs> McVicker. He actually is a very famous uh, Christian uh, musician, worked with uh, um, uh, Rich Mullins. Thank you. Rich, Rich Mullins, and I uh, was uh, very influential in, in his life and vice versa. So that's going to be um, Friday, May 19th at 7 p.m. right here at the church. Then the next night is a Saturday night, and it's really just a whole family gathering. We're going to have a huge meal. We're going to have a, a, a lot of the pastors who have been a part of American Lutheran Church in its history be here. Uh, just a great time to celebrate. That's going to start at 4 p.m. Saturday the 20th. Encourage the whole family. We're going to kids slide and the whole bit. A lot of fun. And then uh, Sunday morning, we're going to do another combined service. So kind of get used to this feel because in a few weeks, we're going to do it again on uh, the 21st. We we'll have one service at 10 a.m. So check that out as well. Put that on your calendar. It's going to be a great day, a weekend of celebration. And then I just want to also mention to you that uh, Gus Erickson from our congregation passed away uh, Monday morning, and that was a sudden uh, passing. So please keep Lena Erickson in your, in your prayers. In fact, let's pray for her right now. Father in heaven, we, uh, we gather before you in this place to worship you, but we also extend our love and our support to Lena as she just goes through this time of grieving. We pray, Lord, that she would feel lifted up on eagle's wings by you and by the members of this church. May we continue to encourage and comfort each other. Thank you, Lord, for the hope of, of everlasting life. Thank you for your amazing grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, there's no mention at this point on uh, a service for guests, but we'll uh, keep you posted on that when that does come. I think that's all the announcements I'm going to mention at this time. So why don't we stand and greet those around you? Look for someone you don't know and uh, wish them a great morning. <laughs>
in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sins. Amen. Patient God, you know how easy it is for us to stray. We wander off so easily. Forgive us, we pray. Heal our brokenness and our fears. Remind us again that you lead us in gentle paths and by quiet waters. When the paths are stormy and the waves tumultuous, help us to remember your protection and your care. Help us to extend that same love and care to others. For we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Just when we think we can go no further, Jesus, the good shepherd, calls to us, bringing us safely into the fold of grace and mercy. Rejoice. We are loved completely and forgiven through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Praise, Praise be to God. God. Sing with joy, for all the ends of the earth shall know the salvation of God. Amen. Good morning, church. This is beautiful. I love seeing all your smiling faces. Go ahead and sing this song with me. Too. Cause you are good, you are good. When there's nothing good in me, you are love, you are love. On display for all to see, you are light, you are light. When the darkness closes in.
forever reign. Amen. What an amazing thing our Lord and Savior has done for us. Amen. Savior say thy strength indeed is small child of weakness watching you. Let us pray together. O oh God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our gospel lesson today is from John chapter 10, beginning with the first verse. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and, and leads them out. 
When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Wait, I didn't tell you to sit. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know, it was a long time to stand. We were talking about that. That's going to be a long time. But hey, I have to stand through the whole message. So shouldn't you all have to do the same thing? Well, grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's just pray right now. Lord, we commit this time in your word to you. Lord, we ask that you would give us ears to hear, hearts to understand, and wills to follow you. Lord, may we not be like the Pharisees of of many years ago that heard your words but could not understand them. Lord, we submit ourselves to you. We ask that you would give us the ability, Holy Spirit, to hear what you are saying to us today. For we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, I love this passage in John chapter 10. So much richness comes out of it. And I'm so happy to be able to share a a word with you today. And in this passage, Jesus talks about a lot of things, but kind of the theme verse in this passage is John 10, 10, where it says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, but I have come that they may have life and have it, how much? Abundantly. Abundantly. In other words... Our life in Christ is intended to not just be something in which we squeak by, but in which we experience the amazing grace of God daily, hourly, moment by moment. Amen? Amen. Now, if I were to ask you, how would you define the word abundantly or the abundant life? I mean, what comes to your mind when you think of an abundant life? My guess, if you are a normal human being, is you probably think of, well, you know, having that awesome home up on the hills in Prescott, Arizona, overlooking the amazing creation of God. Or maybe it's having that that awesome car, Or maybe it's having the perfect job or or the perfect family or the perfect situation and just being able to, you know, kick back and enjoy life. And and I'll tell you that that's not bad. But by and large, I, I, I find that that's not what God is meaning or what Jesus is meaning when he says, I came that you would have life and have it abundantly. Later in the message, I'm going to talk about some verses in which Paul describes the fruit of the Spirit. Fruit that includes love. Fruit that includes joy. Peace. Patience. Kindness. Goodness. Gentleness. Faithfulness. And self-control. Let me ask you this question. Whether you have a lot of money in the bank or whether your bank is dry. Whether you have everything seemingly going for you or maybe your life just seems like it's falling apart. Would you not have an abundant life if your life was marked by love? If your life was marked 
by peace, by joy, by patience, by goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. You see, Jesus, as always, looks way deeper into the things that matter most. We, especially as Americans, often only look to the material things. But Jesus said, oh, the life I want to give you, the life I want you to experience is, is so much more than the stuff you can put in your house or, or the things that you can acquire in this world. And it's to that that I wish to, to speak today. Well, how do we get, how do we experience this abundant life? Well, I'm so glad you asked that question. Thank you. <laughs> in your bulletin, there is an outline if you'd like to follow along. You want to fill in some words. But the first thing that, 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 that has to happen in order for us to experience the abundant life, and this is true for everybody. It doesn't matter if you're rich, you're poor, you're old, you're young, or you're anywhere in between. It doesn't matter what country you come from. It doesn't matter what place you, what's happened in your life. The abundant life starts with Jesus. The abundant life starts with Jesus. Jesus spoke these words. I'm going to share it again. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in some other way, that man is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. And the, and the sheep hear his voice and he calls to his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he has brought out all of his own, he goes before them and the sheep follow him. Why? For they, what? They know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him for they do not know the voice of strangers. Have you ever noticed that in the Bible... We are referred to often as sheep. Who's experienced? Who's, who's read that before? <laughs> now, why is it that God would use sheep as a metaphor for his people, for his flock? I think it's because sheep are so smart. <laughs> right? If you're, if you're wondering what I'm talking about or why everybody's laughing, just Google it. <laughs> I, I remember reading a, 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 an article years ago about a shepherd who had a sheep, and I think it was in Turkey, and, and one sheep went off a cliff, and the other sheep said, that's a great idea. <laughs> and before he could do anything about it, I think over 400 sheep went over the cliff. The good news is that the ones who went a little bit later survived because they had the other sheep to land on. <laughs> sheep are not the smartest of creatures, but they know that they need to follow someone, right? Some time ago, uh, a friend of mine uh, shared this video clip with me, and I'll, don't, don't show it quite yet, but I want to I set it up. It was a, a group of people, and they were on the, at, at the fence line of a sheep pasture, and the farmer said, okay, I want to see if any of you had the ability to call my sheep to come. And so there were several people who attempted to have the right voice, the right intonation to call the sheep. And this is what happens. Let's take a look. <laughs> One more time. Oh, 
shepherd so my first question for you today do you know the shepherd he knows you he knows everything about you the abundant life is not about having Jesus as a good luck charm it's not about wearing a cross on your neck because you think okay That'll give me good luck in my life. Or, or, or having a sticker on your car. The, the abundant life begins when we know Jesus as our shepherd. Later on in John, it says, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. This is not a good luck charm. This is a, a, a person who did everything necessary for us to come and be reconciled to God the Father. And he doesn't force us into this. He invites us and says, follow me. Follow me. Listen to my voice. Listen to what my word says. Listen to me and I will show you an abundant life. And I know some of you are there here today and, and probably you're saying, Pastor Mark, my life is anywhere from being abundant right now. Everything is falling down around me. And I want you to know our hearts are with you. We are with you because we're part of that abundant life as the body of Christ, right? But I want you to know the abundant life that Jesus calls us to is one, to be reconciled with your Father in heaven, but two, to also know you are never alone. No matter what you face, good, bad, or indifferent, he walks with us. And that is what gives us abundance. To know that no matter how messed up things can get in this world, we never walk alone. He is working. He is giving. He is providing. He is leading. The Lord is what? My shepherd, right? He's not the shepherd. He's my shepherd who knows me by name, calls me by name, knows everything about my life, and he knows everything about you. And he says, if you put your trust in me, you will never walk alone. You will begin to experience the abundance that is yours in Christ. The abundant life starts with Jesus. Secondly, what Jesus says in this passage is that we need to, the abundant knife, we, we, we need to recognize the thieves, okay? There, there, are, there is an adversary, right? There is an evil one who seeks to rob us, to steal from us, to take life away from us, and we need to pay attention to those, those, those things that happen so that the evil one does not gain victory, I heard a great, uh, a great thing. Do you know why the devil is referred to as the serpent in the scriptures? Serpent has no arms and, and no legs, right? Well, it's because at the cross and at the resurrection, Satan was disarmed and defeated, amen? Amen. <laughs> Think about that a little bit. John 10.10 10 says, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. 
But I, I have come that they would have life and have it abundantly. What are some of the ways the thief wants to steal, kill, and destroy in our lives? Well, there probably are a myriad of of things, and you're probably aware of many of them, but I wanted to just talk about a, a, a few common ones that I think probably most of us, if not all of us, experience. And the first is this, fear and anxiety. I think especially over the past few years in particular, socially, politically, just as a world, I have never, I have never experienced a season in this society where fear and anxiety have been higher. Whether it be concerns about disease or whether it be concerns about political issues and social issues and all of the things, I think our collective angst has come up. God has worked so many amazing things in my own life in regard to fear and anxiety. That was the main touch, touch point that, that God reached into my life and began to do a work of power in my life. And one of the most profound passages that God gave to me over the years has been Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, where the apostle Paul says, do not be anxious about anything. Let's stop there for a second. What if he stopped there? You ever, have you ever told an anxious person, just don't be anxious? <laughs> is that helpful? It is so unhelpful. When you're afraid, when you're freaking out, stop freaking out. Don't worry. Be happy. <laughs> right? It's just that simple. I'm thankful that Paul doesn't stop there. He says, instead of focusing on your anxiety, do this. In every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. What do we do when we're overwhelmed by anxiety or fear? The abundant life says, you have someone to turn to. You have someone who is over it. And actually, the, the whole process of fear and anxiety is when we get our eyes focused on fear and anxiety, all we can see is what's in front of us. And in Paul invites us, he says, instead of looking at whatever it is that you're fearful of or anxious about, he said, lift your eyes and say, Lord, I come to you because you are over all things. You're over the beginning, you're the end, and everything, and there's nothing that is outside of your power, and I turn to you in prayer. And I give you thanks that you are at work. Do you know that giving thanks is one of the most powerful uh, ways that we can display faith. When you give thanks to God, especially when everything seems to be spiraling out of control, and you say, thank you, Lord, that you're going to give me what I need to face this. That is one of the most profound ways that we can declare faith. As I mentioned earlier, the Lord began to do a work. I remember early on in my, my, my walk with the Lord, and, and I was just, I, I felt so overwhelmed by fear and anxiety. My, my grandma, who I will probably refer to on many occasions over in the days to come, we called her Grandma Jesus. <laughs> because you couldn't, she, she never met a stranger, and you couldn't talk with her more than about 10 seconds before the conversation turned to Jesus. But she prayed for me. And one of the promises that she gave to me during that time was Psalm 34, verse 4. It says, I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. And at the time, I couldn't even imagine 
living a day without having paralyzing fear. But God brought that through as I began to move my attention from my anxieties to him. He began to set me free. And God wants us to be free from fear. Are you, are you experiencing fear and anxiety? We need to put into practice the word of God. Seek the Lord in prayer in everything. Give thanks to the Lord in everything. Focus on what is good, on what is right, on what is pure, what is lovely, and you will experience, begin to experience the peace of God and have victory in that way. The abundant life, is, it wants to set us free from fear and anxiety. Another common thief, and I know we'll hit hearts today with this, is unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is one of the most powerful thieves that we can experience because bitterness, anger, and the things that are associated with unforgiveness are so detrimental to our well-being and our soul. There is a reason why Jesus in the Lord's Prayer says we, we should pray, Lord, forgive us our sins as what? We kind of fly past that second part, don't we? Yeah, I want the forgiveness, Lord, but I sure don't want to have to forgive. Did you know that Jesus put that in there, not for the benefit of the person who you're tr struggling to forgive. He put that in the, pr in the prayer for our benefit so that we can be set free from bitterness and anger and unforgiveness. Nothing gives the evil one more permission to reign in our lives than when we hang on to unforgiveness and bitterness. We are giving him permission. We are giving him permission to live in our lives. And Jesus, I want you to be free from that. And the only way we can be free is to forgive. And you say, Pastor Mark, I, I can't. I, I, I've tried. I don't know how to forgive. And I want, I want to let you know, Jesus knows that too. We need his power. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31, the Apostle Paul says, Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other. How? Just as Christ, in Christ, God forgave you. When we are hanging on to bitterness and rage and anger, it is just this pent up energy, right? It's just this energy that's stored inside us. And you say, how do I get rid of it? This was one of the greatest insights that I had. In my former congregation, we had, a, we had a cross like this, and there was a period of time where I was wrestling with some deep hurts, some deep anger, and some deep bitterness. And I remember literally going over there to the cross that was on the wall in our sanctuary, and I literally said, God, I can't, I have to come to you. I can't do this, I can't let it go, but I have to give it to you. And God gave me a picture that when we have all that energy, we have all that bitterness stored up inside of ourselves, it's got to be grounded in Christ. Just like an, an electric circuit needs to have a ground, we need to be grounded in Christ. Are you wrestling this morning with anger, with bitterness, with rage? The evil one loves to dance on those things because it robs us. It steals life from us. And Jesus invites us, bring it to me. You can't do it, but I can do it. Keep bringing it to me until I set you free remember of the mercy that I have had for you and give that person to me so that you can be set free from bitterness. It's a great story by the great 
warrior of faith, Corey Tenboom. A lot of you maybe know her story. She was in the concentration camps in, in Germany, saw herself as well as her sister and others brutalized in horrible and terrible ways. And she tells a story uh, after the war, God laid it on her heart that she needs to minister to the German people because they were devastated. They were just as devastated by the war and the, and the atrocities in the war. And so she would go around and do evangelistic messages and, 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 and services for people. And people were coming to Jesus and in, in, in accepting his mercy and grace. And at one of these meetings, there was one of the guards that she saw brutalize others. And all of a sudden, her PTSD, her memories brought her right back to that concentration camp. And this guard came up to her after the service, and he said, is it true? Is it true that God could even forgive someone like me? And she said, she remembered saying, I can't, God, I can't forgive him. I can't do it. But what I will do is I will hold out my hand. You have to do the rest. She said, she held out her hand to this gentleman and he grabbed hold of it and she said, the Holy Spirit washed over her and set her free from carrying the bitterness and the anger of what happened many years before. We can't, but he can. Will you bring it to Jesus and be set free? Because that's the abundant life that Jesus wants for us. And then thirdly, we focus sometimes only on the temporal instead of the eternal. We focus only on the temporal. We focus only on the stuff, the day-to-day -day life, the natural world, when God invites us to, to look beyond that. 2 Corinthians 4, 16, the Apostle Paul writes, Therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes, not on what is seen, not on, the, not on the news, not on the political situations, not on the stuff. We don't fix our eyes on those things. That causes anxiety, that causes anger, that causes bitterness. But we fix our eyes what, on what is unseen, on the Lord, upon his plan, upon his kingdom, since what is seen is only temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. On what are you focused today? Is it just the stuff, this world, how crazy it is? Talked about it before. The world has been going to hell in a handbasket for a long time. But we have been positioned in this time and in this place and in this community to proclaim the amazing grace that is ours in Christ. Amen? Amen. So we fix our eyes, not on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is only temporary. What is unseen is eternal. Finally, the abundant life manifests itself in the fruit of the Spirit. Remember, the abundant life, I mean, if you have stuff, great. If you don't have stuff, it doesn't matter. That's not the abundant life that Jesus is talking about. The abundant life that Jesus is talking about, you have a Savior who went to the cross on your behalf and has, has completely covered you with his mercy and his righteousness. You have a companion who walks with you in the, in the struggles and in the difficulties and in the, in the places of pain in your life and will give you freedom as you bring him into every situation. And you have someone who wants to produce fruit in your life. Galatians 5.22 says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, 
peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have done what? Crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let's not become conceited or prideful, provoking and envying each other. Those are the old ways. We die to the old ways. We rise to the new ways. You see, fruit, I think sometimes we get them confused. We, we think of the fruit of the Spirit and the, and the gifts of the Spirit. And they're two different things. Gifts of the Spirit are things that the, the Spirit has given us to, to live out. But the fruit of the Spirit are things that the Spirit produces in our lives As we spend time with Jesus, as we spend time in God's Word, how many of you have some kind of fruit tree on your property? A few of you. But if we're in California, about 70% of the congregation have their hands up. I mean, there's just fruit everywhere, right? There have been times when my fruit trees have produced well, and there have been times when my fruit trees have not produced well. And as much as I want to yell at those fruit trees to produce well, that doesn't help. <laughs> but what makes a fruit tree produce fruit? It has what it needs. It has nourishment. It has water. It has sunshine. It has, it's free from disease. It's, it's set free. And there are things that we can do to nurture the tree, but we cannot get a tree to produce. But a tree will produce when it has what it needs. Is there something that is robbing you of producing good fruit? Hanging on to the things that the evil one wants us to hang on to. Unforgiveness, bitterness, fear, anxiety. Those things rob us of being able to produce good fruit. And we overcome them by coming to Jesus. The Holy Spirit will produce good fruit in us as we spend time with Jesus. I think it's so common, and I run into it myself, how often I think, oh, there's an area in my life that I know I need to work on. How many of you ever said that? I need to work on that. <laughs> can, I, can I give you some good news? You don't need to work on it. You need more Jesus. Jesus said this in John 15, 5, I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can't do anything. That is one of those mind-blowing reality verses for me. Because so often I get caught up into, I need to do this better. I need to hunker down. I need to fight harder. No, what I need to do is I need to spend more time with Jesus. I need to spend more time in God's word. I need to say, Holy Spirit, I yield myself to you. May your will be done in me and through me. You need to set me free from fear and anxiety. You need to set me free from, from unforgiveness. You need to set me free from the paralyzing temporal world so I can see and fix my eyes on you. It starts with Jesus. It continues with Jesus. And it finishes with Jesus. He is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. He's the shepherd. We're the sheep. May we only hear him. Amen? Amen. I invite you to stand.
words, I believe, are some of the strongest words we can say. So let us share together what we believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Acts 20, verse 35 says, In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak, remembering the words the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Let us receive our tithes and offerings. Please be seated.
under shepherd, we are your people, the sheep of your flock. Heal the sheep that are wounded, touch the sheep that are in pain. Clean the sheep that are soiled and warm the lambs that are cold and vulnerable. We especially ask for your comforting presence to be with Lena Erickson and family upon the passing of Lena's husband, Gus. Bring to mind any and all whom we can personally minister to this day. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you know our personal concerns about our loved ones who have become prodigals. We know you love these lost sheep even more than we do. Therefore, Lord, as we lift our prodigals up to you, we ask you to remove their hearts of stone and open their eyes to the truth of who you are and what you long to do for them. Please give them a new heart that longs to return to you. Lord, in your mercy. We place our prayers before you, God, united in spirit, through your resurrected Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And so now, um, if you're comfortable, I would like to invite you to extend your hands in a posture of receiving to receive today's blessing. Now may the God of peace that brought us again from from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that shepherd, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, and working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. 